everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Straight Talk from our show. I'm Bruce Wilson, the Executive Director of Service Rendered Incorporated. And Straight Talk from our is one of our pro many programs that we have. Before we get started, talk to our wonderful guests. Uh, I want to make some um, announcements about our um, programs. So our programs are, is what we're doing now. We're having a reopening of our art gallery called Art So Wonderful located at the University Mall, and it's April 29th. We're going to have um, hors d'oeuvres and inter live entertainment. Some incredible people are going to be speaking about how important it is to have um, these type of outlets, of art galleries and um, live entertainment with, uh, through our um, Vermont Local Art and Music Program. And so I'm very excited. Um, and then April 29th, we're also going to have an event in Cinecourt in the University Mall is to um, celebrate and, ed and um, thank youth for being on boards. We created Youth on Boards in 2003, and they sit on the police commission, planning commission, school boards, and so we just revised our um, resolution with the city of Burlington, and so we these events that we're doing, one is tonight, you, you, you'll probably get to see it, it's going to be at the City Hall Contours Auditorium, and youth are going to be performing, and we have some dignitaries to speak about how important it is to be on the city boards. And so we're very excited. And so let's get right to our show. And so our guest today is, is Elaine. Yes, hi, Bruce. From, from um, Emerge Vermont. Elaine Haney from Emerge yeah, Vermont. That's right, yep. help me out here. <laughs> and so how are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks and, so much for having me on. And thank you for, for coming. That's you know. my pleasure, absolutely. Right? And our co-host is Jenna Walker. Hello, Jenna. Hi. <laughs> Student at uh, St. Michael's College, and we love St. Michael's College mm -hmm. and all our colleges around um, the state. But St. Michael College is, is very important to us, you know, liberal, liberal arts college. And um, we've done a lot of things there at uh, Elliott Hall and 300 rail jabs at 300 Field and mm -hmm. working with students and all kind of ways. So thank you. Um, so Elaine. So many, legis many um, um, professional people f that's um, entering into the, um, some type of election has went through your program. Yeah. Emerge Vermont trains Democratic women to run for office. So we offer instruction on all the different aspects of campaigning, from field work to fundraising, messaging, and budgeting, and campaign finance, and all that kind of information that you need to run a successful campaign to get elected. And so we've had in the past, uh, we started in 2013. We were founded by Governor Madeline Kunin mm. and a collection of amazing Vermont women. And we have uh, currently, by the end of this session that we're training right now, we'll have 176 alumni. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Boy, I love Madeline Kunin. Every time I see her, you know, she's, she's, she's so distinguished. She is, and she is just an absolute role model for any woman who wants yeah. to get involved in local government. She started at the most basic level in her town and moved her way up and broke a lot of barriers for women yes, in government. Did. And unfortunately, Vermont has not seen as much advancement in that area as we'd like to see. There's only been 14 women who serve in statewide office in our history, wow. and Madeline is, is Two of them, she served as lieutenant governor and as governor. So we are really hopeful that the graduates from our program are going to continue breaking those barriers and entering offices where women haven't been traditionally represented before. And so what's the application process? How do, how do um, women get involved in, your pro in the program? So we have a training that is about 70 plus hours. And at the moment, it goes from January to April. So it has moved around in the past, but the current session is January to April, and this coming August, we will open the application again for the class of 2023, and it will go from January to April of 2023. And how many people? Um... Generally, um, our current class has 24 women in it. Generally, we're, you know, we don't try, we try to go no higher than 25 people, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. We also offer smaller trainings occasionally, not on a regular basis, sometimes a, a, like a weekend boot camp or um, some evening webinars as well. But those are sort of more um, 
uh, spontaneous, the signature training that we do happens every year. So out uh, of 70 hours, that's a lot. Then, well, it's that's, a lot. Is, that's a lot of time, you know. And, um, and so are the, are the classes like um, the weekends or evenings or mornings? Both, actually. So with COVID, we learned that we have to do a lot of this online. And in fact, I'm a graduate of the 2021 class, wow. and that was done entirely online because of COVID. Yeah. So we met for very long Zoom sessions on weekends. But this year, we're doing a hybrid version. So we've had several Saturdays and then a bunch of evenings online. And um, the last couple Saturdays have been in person. And the evenings online are three hour sessions. And so we have had five Saturdays and I believe we've had, oh, I've lost count of the days, but it was a total of 13 different sessions. Oh. And the last session is actually next Saturday where we'll finish things up and then we're going to celebrate the graduation of our class as well as the classes of 21 and 20 because they didn't get a graduation oh, party yeah. because of oh. COVID. So we're going to have a big celebration on Saturday, oh. May 14th. That's awesome. In Barrie. Yeah. Oh, wow. Barrie. I love Barrie. We're going to do the uh, event at the Old Labor Hall, which oh, is yeah. a wonderful yeah, I know where it is. Uh, historic building yeah. with a great exhibit on the Barrie Union formations over the, over the century. Yeah. So, so um, s s um, how do you get graded? We don't grade. It's not uh, it's like that. We don't. You don't graduate with a transcript or anything. You do get a diploma, but mm -hmm. um, it's more the experience. And the women who sign up to take our class are not all going to run for office. They are also women who are exploring. Like I think I want to do public service, but I'm not sure what that means. And they want to learn how much effort it takes to run for office as part of that education for themselves. Many women take the training because they want to be campaign managers or campaign comms directors. Um, and then there's the women who plan to be candidates. And some of them come in and they say, I'm running this year. And others will say, I have a goal of five years from now, I'm going to run for this office. So it's a wide spectrum and everybody learns the same thing together, but we don't have like a, you know, a grading system or anything like that. That's not the point. No, that's not the point. Yeah. You know, um, so I just wanted to know, um, uh, so they, once they do the 70 hours, they, um, they should be ready. <laughs> like, they're ready to run. They're ready to Absolutely. run. Absolutely. Our class this year has, I, it's possible that we will have up to eight women on the August primary this year, which is incredibly exciting. And four of the women in our class are now on their select boards, which those elections take place in March. So that's already happened for them. And it's really exciting to see the different offices that these folks are choosing to run for. So like if somebody was interested in running for like school board, is, is, is your program something that they should, might want to be a part of? Or? Absolutely. School board and select board races are smaller because the districts are small, but the skills are the same. And you might not have to raise a ton of money, yeah, maybe yeah. even $500 is more than enough. But understanding the importance of going door to door, meeting your neighbors where they are, right. getting your message honed and saying, you're getting your point across quickly and accurately and concisely so that voters know what to think about you and they can start forming their opinions as to who's gonna vote, who they're gonna vote for. Those skills are super important no, no matter what race it. you're running for. Yes. Yeah, the, if I could just say one more thing we'll about keep that. Talk, keep talking about it. The, um, the importance of this training also is not just if you're running for office or want to be in politics. If you're somebody who runs for or who is running a nonprofit or you are somebody who in your community that wants to make a change, knowing how to convince the public how to vote for something is a really important skill. Maybe you want to institute um, a, a program in your community and your select board is, is wanting to know what the public thinks and you need to explain to them why it's important and, and you have to talk to them over a period of time and perhaps raise money. These skills are super important outside of politics as no. well. No doubt. So, um, <clears throat> all right, so, so uh, yes, those skills are so important. So when you're you talking about um, what are some of the main strengths you need to um, to run? Is it is, is it the marketing? Is um, like you said, getting your point out there? Um, um, how do you reach these people? How do you you know what's what's some of your trainings in reaching these individuals? The marketing aspects, the, the reaching them, um, your platform. Yeah. How, you, how how important is all the platforms? Well, I'll tell you, it's an important question you're asking. I'm going to get an answer that I don't think you're expecting. 
We focus from the very start on your personal values. Why are you running? Why is it really important to you that you get into this office and what change are you hoping to make? You need to be really clear on that because as you go through the campaign process, things are gonna come out of left field. You're gonna be doubting yourself sometimes. You're gonna be criticized. You're gonna be questioned and you need to know, why am I doing this? That's the most important thing. And that authenticity comes through when you are working on your messaging, when you're trying to convince a voter to vote for you, or when a voter comes to you and says, I, I just, I'm not buying anything you're selling right now. And you can say, okay, I accept that, but that's what's my core belief. So that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. And then when you talk about messaging, you know, you want to talk about how to say that in the shortest amount of words possible Definitely. while getting your point across mm -hmm. and, and how to have presence on camera, how to work yeah. with the media, how to write a press release. Yeah. All those kinds of things are super important. And knowing your core mission, your core values deeply and accurately helps you share that message that much more clearly. What do you what do you say in a press release? You know, when you I mean, what do you say when you about to when you're running for uh, some office or something? What do you, I mean? What, what do you press say? releases are actually kind of formulaic. Yeah. You want to say who, what, where, when, and why. Yeah. So you know, Jane Smith is running for the, the office of state legislature for District X, and she's announcing her candidacy today. And then you say your these are the things she hopes to accomplish, and then some information about the district, and then you're done. Press releases are more for getting information out for a specific purpose, whereas talking to um, interviewers, writing letters to the editor or something on Front Porch Forum, those are th places where you can be a little bit more expansive and talk about your vision or your values. Um, press releases are really handy tools to get the media to pay attention to what you're trying to do in the actual events or um, announcements. So, um... <clears throat> Um, you, how, you, so how many? So how many people graduate? Is it a graduation? Yeah, we call it a graduation. Okay. So how many people graduated? Well, we're graduating 24, yeah, on, 24 April on April 14th. Uh, excuse me, May 14th. I should say total. Is and that? total, we've, we've, um, we will have at the end of May 176 alumni. Wow. We're really proud of that. Oh, that's so awesome. Does that number include the weekend um, workshops as, to, yes, as well? Yes, the boot camp people, absolutely. Um, it includes everyone who's gone through a boot camp training or our signature training. It also includes people who have taken training at the national level. So Emerge is actually a national organization with affiliates in 27 states, and they also offer training. And so um, we, for example, last summer ran a national boot camp camp that had 38 women in it from across the country. And some of them were from Vermont. And so those count towards our alumni as well. Awesome. Um, I noticed on your website, it is a national company or a uh, project, but you have Emerge for Women and you have Emerge for Men. Is there possibly in the future Emerge for LGBTQ people or um, just non-binary representation that we could see coming forward? That's an awesome future? question, Jenna. Thank you for asking that. Men for Emerge Vermont is actually a group of supporters, so mm -hmm. they are not part of our training system. But we, um, we look to them for their support mm -hmm. and to support our candidates and um, to help us with um, training, uh, training other people to the how to work with women and, mm -hmm. and to how to improve representation of women. Um, Emerge as a national organization is having discussions right now about how to incorporate non-binary individuals into our training because we are very focused on um, electing more people from the new American majority, which is you know LGBTQ people, single women, un, un, um, childless women, women of color, LGBTQ people. We want to make sure that that majority, which is going to be like between the next 20 and 30 years, those are the folks who are going to be in the majority of the United States. They need to be represented. So we're training them now so that they can be in office as soon as they possibly can and improve representation for that. So non-binary inclusion is something that is very high on our minds right now, and we're working on how to do that. Lovely. Yeah. Yes. That's... I'm really proud to be affiliated with an organization that's working on that. No doubt about it. You know, and... Um... <clears throat> So I don't know how many people uh, African Americans uh, have been through the training. Not as many as we'd like. And um, I became director um, almost a year ago, and one of my goals was to increase the diversity of our leadership and of our alumni. And so 
We expanded our cabinet in the past year to um, include, we, have, we now have four women of color on our cabinet, and then um, we've actively recruited women of color to take the training. So this year, we have um, five women of color in the training, so that's about 16%, I believe. No, I'm, I'm wrong, 20% of the, st of the class, which is the highest percentage we've had of people of color in the class. And my goal is to just keep increasing that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a decent number for at, with 24 women graduating right. this year. Right, and so that's <laughs> the kind of ratio, at least, I would like to see going forward, for sure. No, you know, Vermont being one of the whitest states in America, it's kind of hard to get people who might look like me or Jenna to be a part of. Yeah. Um, um, your program, and so are you out actually out there recruiting, trying to find them or looking yes. for them, or, and um, you know these type of people, and and then to do that you would have to, um, they would want to be run for some office too, though, right? Well, as I said, a lot of the women who take the training don't necessarily have an office in mind when they get started, oh, okay. but we yes, we are actively recruiting women of color and um, folks to take the training all the time, so. We have um, four cabinet members now who are women of color, and so they are working with me to expand my network so that I can reach out to those people and offer the training to them. And they are connecting me to people, as well as the women um, who are in the class now. You know, they have friends. and So the more that we train, the more the word gets out. But I'm also, um, I've reached out to various organizations. I've spoken to the folks who are organizing the Bright Leadership Institute to say, you know, please send your, your class members to us and we can send our class members to you. Um, I've talked to Rights and Democracy Vermont. Um, Mia Schultz, who is the um, Catalyst um, Leadership Program Director, is on our cabinet. And so Mia has taught in our classes and I've taken classes through them. I'm really hoping that we can expand that partnership and raise the awareness of Emerge to communities of color so that they know that this is an option for them. No doubt about it. Yeah. And so, um, um, Ray um, Girafano. Girafano, you know, awesome person. Yes. You know, and she talked about being on, going through your training or, or maybe still going through it. Yes, yeah, she is in our current class right. and she has the unusual position of she was planning to run for school board, but then the um, state representative from her district stepped down and Ray was appointed to take the, her place by house, the governor. Yeah. So now she's gonna run for re-election, or mm -hmm. it'll be her first election. Yeah. But she's already in the seat, so that's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we're you know, really we, proud of her. She came and she met, we met, we met, she came to my one of my places in one of my gallery, and we met and talked about ways we can work together. Mm -hmm. um, she also just got inducted Wednesday to the SS Rotarian. Rotary. I'm, 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 I'm an SS <laughs> Rotarian, and, and it was nice that, um, and I was like, Ray, sit on the same committee with me, you know, like uh, I'm on the uh, Equity and Diversity yeah. and Inclusion Committee. Yeah. She says, no doubt about it. Yep. And uh, she's doing this other program called VIEW. And so that's she needs. Yeah, you know, yeah. the really amazing thing about a lot of the women who go through Emerge is they're, they're involved in everything. Like you, they're on multiple boards and they're in multiple community settings making a difference. And running for office is a piece of that. You know, a lot of people will run for office They'll serve a couple terms, and then they'll go on and do other things, and that's really important. Some folks stay in the legislature for a long time, right. but others, you know, they 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 have a broad expanse of experience, and they try to bring their skills to those audiences in a variety of different ways. And being elected is just one of those ways you can make a difference. So Jenna is a sophomore at St. Michael's College, and um, and I, I guess that that put you over eighteen. And so, so how, what's the age limit? Uh, uh, Eighteen minimum. is definitely the minimum. Mm -hmm. So, and I would love to talk to you about taking the training. Um, in fact, um, we have an intern at Emerge Vermont who is also a St. Michael's student. She's a freshman, and um, it's a great training for young people who are exploring. Um, our current class has two high school seniors in it, and. I think it's really valuable because you know both of those women are you know they've got their whole future in front of them they're not sure what they're going to want to do and so having this training means that if they decide to run for office in the future they'll have the tools right there and the other thing about emerge that is really it separates emerge from other organizations that train people is we have a network it's our sisterhood and so when you're a graduate of emerge you are an emerge sister forever and these women support each other on the campaign trail in the legislature, on the select board, we support each other in you know friendly ways as well, and so it's a group of people who are 
extremely dedicated to each other and also to making sure that representation of women continues to improve in Vermont. And that's the overall goal. That's the whole point of this is to have better representation of women in yeah, government. No doubt about it. And so, uh, <clears throat> I don't, you know, it seemed like this is, uh, this state is seen more Democratic than um, Republican or I guess Democratic and progressive mm -hmm. probably than more than Republican. So, um, so, so what's, how does that work when, when they, um, I guess it don't matter what, what who you're affiliated with, but are there Republicans within your organization? Or you might be one. So. Emerge Vermont trains Democratic women. Oh, okay. That is the only requirement okay, that we have. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. And so, so which is good. Now, how many women, um, uh, it seemed like a, it seemed like, I, I don't know, I, I don't have the answers, but it seemed like there's a lot of um, women that sits in the House and legislative and, um, and more than men. Yeah, um, Vermont is, that, is um, among the top 10 of state legislatures that have women in office. We used to be number one, but other states have caught up with us and we're somewhere between seven and nine right now oh, wow. um, at 42%. Which is great. Mm -hmm. It's not 50%. It's not reflective of the actual demographics of our state. So we want to see 50% or better in the state house. And we're really fortunate because we have um, in the state house the leaders, the chairs of the committees are mostly women, which is amazing. And then we have a um, a woman Senate pro tem. We have a woman speaker of the house. We have a woman lieutenant governor. We have a woman state treasurer, and that's outstanding. And in fact, the three um, legislative leaders, the speaker, the pro tem, and the lieutenant governor, they're all eMERGE women. They all graduated from eMERGE. <laughs> I know, it's like, it's like being in Harvard. We're or, incredibly or, or proud of that. And there's about, there's 24 women in the state house who are eMERGE grads. And then there's a, one woman who is a, a secretary, um, Secretary Julie Moore of Agency of Natural Resources is an eMERGE grad. Um, the three, the three, three of the four women who are running for Congress right now are um, for this for the House are um, so Senator Keisha Rom Hinsdale is a co-founder of Emerge Vermont. Senator Ballant is a graduate, and Lieutenant Governor Gray is a graduate. In addition, um, there is a, an Emerge grad, Dr. Nikki Tron, who is running against Congressman Welch for the Senate seat. She is also an Emerge grad. Wow! So um, we're so important. everywhere. I know. <laughs> so important. So why do you think? Um, I mean, everybody, I use, I just use, a, I use Harvard, but I should use my school, Northwestern, but I uh, not I use Harvard. Um, <laughs> why do you think people want to go, want to um, come to Emerge from Mind? Why do you think they want to need those 70 hours? Like, well, and then so they can put on their, I mean, I know they put on their resume and they press, because I'm here, I hear, I heard it from Ray, I heard it from Daisy, another one of your students, and, um, and I didn't ask him nothing about Emerge from Mind. They just came out and said it, you know what I'm saying? And so why do you think? Did because they it works. Because it works. Women get elected. So we, uh, in either the 2020 or the 2018 cycle, we had an 83% win rate. That's enormous. So that means 83% of the eMERGE women who ran for office won. A lot of them are still in the state house. Mm -hmm. And the training is super effective. So it, it, it's, there's no secret sauce. It's just the hard work of understanding how to do field work, how to fundraise, how to get your message out clearly. It's effective training, and we do it in a way that brings women together, and the network is the other piece of it. People tell you about Emerge without you even asking because it's really special, and people really enjoy having that camaraderie, that sisterhood, and knowing that they can call on each other to support themselves when they need it. And it, it, that even extends to fundraising. Like I know that when, if I ever decide to run for office, I can call my eMERGE sisters and they'll help me out with that. And I will do the same for them. I think that's the whole package. It's the effective training and the sisterhood that really make it a compelling thing for folks to do if they want to run for office. And plus to, um, the, I think, um, no, you, gotta, you, you just can't take this away is, is what you said about them having that character, the characteristics of wanting to run or, or um, um, why you why they why do I want to you know run for this and why and I think that's important to be able to present that right well right about mm -hmm. why well and I think also the we have an innate understanding that women do things kind of differently when women have passed legislation there's been studies done at the congressional level that um, legislation 
introduced by women has a higher success rate and it has a higher number of co-sponsors signing on. And so that shows success because women are more collaborative in the way they do their work. They build alliances. They work together to pass legislation. And on top of that, women tend to focus on the more traditional woman topics like childcare, mental health services, families, food, healthcare. Those are the topics that are really important to women because they are generally more associated with the family. And you know, the needs of women come more to the center when women are at the table. So you will see legislation about domestic abuse or sexual harassment, improvements to the criminal justice system because we are looking to solve problems. And we know how to do that in a collaborative way. And it's a new way to do business if you're formerly a legislature that has been predominantly men. They just do things a little differently. Priorities might be a little different. Um, I think that Vermont has benefited enormously from the presence of all the women that are in the State House, and in particular with the leadership that there is now. We have an outstanding treasurer. We have an outstanding lieutenant governor. Our state legislative leadership is really tops. They've managed to get Prop 5 and Prop 2 on, on the ballot. They, are work they succeeded in getting a pension plan going through, although we'll see if our governor will not veto that. But there's been a huge amount of progress made by these women, and they're a great example of how government can run effectively. So, yeah, so you have Becca, you got you have, um, Molly, and you got Acacia. So, and they all run it for a um, congresswoman, you know, for the House. Um, so how do you support candidates? I mean, you know, what do you, you know, I'm, sh I'm sure you do, right? Do you support them somehow? Or? Well, not necessarily because ex the congressional race is a great example. There are three extremely talented Emerge women running. We do not endorse candidates. We don't do any official endorsements of any kind. Mm -hmm. We do not contribute to candidates. We do not um, do any campaigning for them on their behalf. What we do do is after primaries, when the individual Democratic candidate, if it's an Emerge candidate, will say, go. Like, we'll support them in that way. We support them with things like social media. Um, but nothing significant in the terms of campaign support because we are not a, um, a campaign. We're not a PAC. We are a training organization. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's, I get it. You know, um, and, uh, and, but, you know, it's kind of seemed like um, that you could, though. You could if you wanted to. If you, I, mean, I don't know if it's part of your bylaws, but um, because, like, um, I think um, Welch have supported some, some one of the candidates, you know. So people are completely at freedom to contribute to I mean, whomever they wish. I mean, being a congressman, yeah. you know what I mean? You know, I, I don't think he's. My, I guess so. I don't know. I would, I would, if I was running for Congress, I would want him to support me, you know. But. Well, Congressman Welch has, Welch has been very generous to Emerge Vermont. He has been a sponsor of some of our events in the past for many years. Yeah. And um, contributing to Emerge Vermont is contributing to the education of any woman who is a Democrat who wants to get that training. Um, it's not contributing to any of our individual graduates as, as candidates. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, I'm, I, I like them. You know, I'm going to tell you a funny story. So one day it was um, I'm a youth service provider, so I work with the coalitions around the youth coalitions around the state of Vermont. And so one year we was going to um, Washington to visit our um, senators and congressmen, and um, and we and we did. You know I mean? And so uh, we we go to um, Welch's office. You know, it's a little smaller than the rest of you know the <laughs> senators' office, and and uh, so it's hard to find the seat. So he's like, Bruce, Bruce. Come sit over here. So sitting at his desk, you know, I'm sitting at his desk. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, cool. So now, you know, so I'm sitting at the uh, congressman's desk, you know. And then um, one year we was at the, I was at the Kiss Safe Collaborative Awards, you know, um, just, um, we got four of them. <laughs> um, he like, he was speaking. He's like, and there goes Bruce Wilson who took over my office. I'm like, oh, no, no, you didn't. Peter, you didn't say that. <laughs> so it's funny. So, but, you know, he's, he's, got, he's a humorous guy. He's, he's great. He's cool, you know. I, I like him, you know, anyways. I liked him anyways for that mm -hmm. event. But, um, um, and I'm just, you know, I think all the candidates are really, um, um, you know, it's, it's, it's um, unique, are unique. And based on who they are and what they do, it's like, um, they're, they're definitely different. They have, they believe a lot about the same, um, they got same, some of the platforms are the same, mm -hmm. but um, which you, you have to be, you know, like in a housing, for instance, you know, I mean, good Lord, you gotta have, you gotta be tough on, you know, want that to happen. And um, so it's gonna be very interesting. I know um, um, 
you know, I know, I, I think my way's in the lead, you know, she's, she's, um, um very important to, uh, as a lieutenant governor, and uh, listen, the rest of them is doing the positions that they are in, and hopefully that's some female might, might step into their spot, whoever wins. You hopefully, know. yeah. You know. Yeah, the so, lieutenant so, governor's race is, has quite a few candidates oh, in I it. know. <laughs> I know, um. Zuckerman, I think he's back in the, that race. Yep, that's right. Yeah. He was on. He was on this show not long ago. You know, I said, Zuckerman, are you going to run for? He's like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> back. But that's all right. I'm glad he is. You know what I mean? Because no, he stayed. I think he was lieutenant governor for some. For, no, a couple of terms. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. You know, uh, he did well, and I like some of his. I like his philosophy. Um, a lot of things he um, wanted to do and and, uh, and did. You know what I mean? Um, well, there's definitely some challengers there, though. There's yeah. quite a few candidates who yeah. are all very qualified. It'll be an interesting How many? race. I there's should know this. Four, I believe, four? at the moment. There's um, uh, former Representative Kitty Toll, and current Representative Charlie Kimball, and then um, Patricia Preston, who's the director of the World Ca Council on World Affairs. So they're all highly qualified people. So it'll be a very interesting primary. Let me ask you a question. What is a lieutenant governor's job? Because it's like the vice president of, you know, of like the United States because you're like, are you going to do something? You know, well, like, it's very similar. <laughs> the, the vice president and the lieutenant governor both preside over the Senate. Right. So um, Lieutenant that, Governor yeah, Gray yeah. Um, starts the day at the Senate each day that she's there. Um, she's the tie-breaking vote if there's a tie. And then other than that, the lieutenant governor's office is, um, I don't want to say largely ceremonial, ceremonial, but it's it's an opportunity to get out and and either you know work in partnership with the governor or work in partnership with the legislature to go across the state and meet the community and meet the voters and and help advance the initiatives of the administration. So why do you think that um, since uh, uh, except um, Dean that there's been Republican um, governors? Why do you think? Vermonters are funny. How that happen? Right, we split the ticket all the time. Um, I think Vermonters love their incumbents, first of all. And so if you get in, you're in. Vermonters generally tend to re-vote or re-elect their incumbents. Um, I think that there are definite blue pockets in Vermont, like Burlington, Brattleboro, a little bit of Washington County. But there's a lot of rural voters as well, and they tend to vote more conservatively. And so they have been voting for Republican governors for many, many years. Um, but as you know, they've also voted for Democratic governors. Yeah, no um, and right now the legislature is Democratic. That could change. Dean did some so, good, how many terms he do? Oh, he served for eight years, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that, is it four years, what is it? Four years? We have two year two terms year for terms governor. for governors, That's right. right. Yeah. And, and most of them tend to serve, you know, six to eight years. Yeah, yeah. like um, the Dean did. And we'll find out soon whether Governor yeah. Scott's planning to run for re-election. But I think it will be his fifth term if he does yeah, I don't. That. I don't know what else what he would do unless, unless he, you know, wasn't governor. I think he'd retire and be very happy. <laughs> like, be, go, go back to race car driving. Take a rest. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk COVID. about the plight of the world a little bit. Okay. Um, so, so COVID. So now uh, CDC. I said that we can take our mask off. Mm. Is there some dispute around that, right? What you, and what do you think? Well, I'm certainly not an expert on any of that, mm -hmm. but for me personally, you know, this I is a, this is a human being. This is a person. I think it's I think it's unfortunately very confusing right now, mm -hmm. and I think that the new variant is just running rampant through our school system, and I think there's been a lack of management on the school system side to pro provide consistent guidance to prevent illness. But it's very difficult with people who are really anxious to get on with, without having to change their lives anymore because of COVID. Um, and I think it's very difficult to be in the position of the Department of Health and the CDC after all this time trying to control the population with has so many vast opinions on it. And COVID is not impacting everybody, the, you know, everybody, everybody's not experiencing the same impact. So yeah. some people know folks that have had COVID and it's been mild and others know co people who have been very, very sick. But um, I, don't, I don't envy the CDC at all. It's a very difficult job what they're doing. It is a very difficult job. Um, and then, um, I don't know, it's like, you know, I'm like, God, you know, they were talking about another a booster shot. 
or something, or fourth. Yeah, like, fourth booster. I don't know. And I'm thinking, there you go, man. Next, you know, six months later, you, there's another. Next, you know, like, have you had your 155th <laughs> booster shot? We'll probably get to a point where every year we get a COVID shot, just like we get a flu yeah, shot, yeah, you know? Definitely. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just going to say, a lot of people didn't, didn't take no shots. And um, because they, I don't know, what, they all had different um, uh, reasons and theories. You know, but I, I know you couldn't even go, when, my, when I was a kid, you couldn't even go to school without taking those shots. They would put and bring yeah. a class to the auditorium. All those nurses and doctors were there mm -hmm. to give you those uh, measles shots, and, yeah. you know, and, and everybody did it. You know, it was like four, four diff three or four different shots, you know, at different times that we all had to take them. And um, you, some um, immunity um, shots, and um, mm -hmm. nobody complained. It was they just did it. You yeah, know what I mean? we're in different times now. Yeah, it's I know. Very true. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I don't. Yeah. You know, so anyway, so that was part of it. So then I want to talk about a little bit just about um, U Ukraine. Let's jump in anytime. Okay. You want to. Just you know because you know, I think um, the plight of the world, right? So you know, um, um, you know, it's definitely political, but I, it's you know. The whole thing is about, I guess, about politics and economics. You know. I think it's more economics. Yeah. I think that Russia is very concerned about the uh, natural resources in Ukraine, and they want access to them. Yeah. And I think they are doing what they can to maintain yeah. their power over that region for that particular reason. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Jenna? What do you think about um, Ukraine? What do you think about um, what's, you know, why, you know, what's, what's going on there, why, why it's happening and still continued to? Seem like the point has been made, or I guess, I don't know, obviously not. That's a very difficult question <laughs> as a college student to consider, but I personally, um, as a sociology major, I look at it and I actually was just learning about this the other day from my wonderful professor, but she was telling us about um, how colonization can really have an effect even now, even if it was centuries ago, and how Russia may want this power over Ukraine even though they're not entitled to it, they still feel like they are, and so they're gonna keep making these people feel like they owe it to Russia to give them these resources. And I think that it's a really toxic habit that we've created in the world of making some people feel inferior or less than just because of selfishness or greed mm -hmm. or arrogance. And I think that it's something that we would really have to consciously work as a community, as a global community to get over. And I don't think people are ready to do that, unfortunately. I don't think many people are making the mature choice to look at it impartially and from an unbiased viewpoint. And I think it's really unfortunate that we've gotten to this point. I think you're right. I think a power dynamic is a big piece of this. Yeah, no doubt about it. And um, it's just so sad, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and this is all the work I do is about humanitarian. You know, I mean, it's all about working with people in the communities, and you know, and it's a, to to have to go through this. You know, I mean, you know, all these poor little kids and families and yes. infrastructure, historical buildings and um, religious um, buildings and foundations, and it's like culture and history. Are culture being and wrong. history, yeah. yeah. It's like it's crazy. It's well, so and the bad. trauma they've created. The trauma, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're Absolutely. Right. Well, you got any last, any parting words, Elaine? Well, any? I'm really grateful to you for having me on, yeah. Bruce. This has yeah. been really nice, and Thank I'm excited you. to know that your viewers will hear about Emerge Vermont. No and doubt about it. I hope that lots of folks are interested in learning about how they can train to run for office. You can visit our website, emergevt.org. Um, and as I said, our application process will open in August. And I'm looking forward to meeting a whole new cohort of amazing Vermont women who want to change the world. Well, I want to thank um, Elaine Haney, the executive director of Emerge Vermont, for coming on our show as I guess. And thank you. I learned a lot, you know, and I'm so happy I did. That's one thing I like about our shows. We learn a lot from people. Uh, <laughs> and um, Jenna, she might, I might have to be here like her boy or something, get it to run us for something. <laughs> well, I, I'd be happy to talk with you offline about that. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Senator, come on, you got that. Go ahead, give it to Senator. You look. can Go see ahead. it, you can be it. Uh, <laughs> give it to Senator. Look. Go ahead. Do it. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, and thank you, audience, for tuning in to um, Straight Talk from my show. See you soon.